AI is a huge topic of discussion right now. So I figured we'd take a look at how we can use stable diffusion to create images inside Houdini. So to start off here, this is actually a tool that's made by Mohsen Tabasi. Sorry if I completely butcher your name, but this is a tool that's made by him. So I'll leave the links in the description. You can go ahead and download the things that you need. So first of all, you're going to need the automatic 1111 server, and then you're also going to need this HDA that he has made. So the way that we can go ahead and install this, let's you download this, which is the HDA, and then you'll need to also download the stable diffusion model and install that. So if you come down to install and run, depending on your system, but we'll do NVIDIA GPUs because that's what I have, you go and download Python, you download this Git, install both of those, and then you can just open up a command prompt and type this in and it starts to run. After you have done that, you need to not run this web UI user Dot bat there is one thing that you need to do first which is stated right here you need to change something in that so let's go ahead and take a look at that going to navigate to the folder that you install we're going to right click and we'll edit with just a notepad and we need to change this line right here add this dash dash api and once you've done that that enables the web ui api and we can just go ahead and double click that it's going to start running and it's going to open up, or it's going to allow us to open up. It's gonna give us a, a web address here once it launches itself. And this walks you through how to do it all as well. Uh, this is the address. Let's go ahead and let it run. I don't have the Xformers. The Xformers uh, apparently make it faster, but I haven't uh, installed those. And actually, while we're doing this, we're waiting for this to, to go about. One thing that you do need to do before this is come over to Google and type in stable diffusion depth to image. You need to download some models. So we want to use the depth to image one because that's going to give us the closest to our camera. So let's you go ahead and click on this. It'll open up a page that looks like this. You just come to files and versions, and then you're going to want to download this checkpoint. Once you have that checkpoint downloaded, you're going to actually need to put it into this models folder. So you'll come in here, uh, you can just drop it in here and then it'll move it over to the stable diffusion one if you want, or you can just put it directly in here and then it should be all set. I have a couple more that I have added in here, but the depth to image one is gonna be the one that we're going to use. And you'll have this once it's already installed everything that it needs to. When you, it takes quite a long time to install the first time. It has to go through and install things and launch. So give it some time. But once it's done, you can just select your address here. Come up to this. Oops. And then we'll paste it in here. And now we have the Web UI user API. So we'll come back over to Houdini and you will need to install the HDA that you downloaded into the OTLs, which should just be in your documents and then Houdini. So we'll drop in this stable diffusion node. And this has all the settings that we need to actually go about creating things. But let's go ahead and do one thing quick here. First, let's drop in a geometry node because we're going to be using our geometry that we create to kind of generate the initial image and then it's going to take our, our input and it's going to make whatever we want. So maybe we'll do, let's see, maybe we'll do a height field and we'll do some height field noise. Let's zoom out here. And maybe we will just offset this by some random number, get something that we may like. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of erosion too. Give it a second here. We will turn off our visualization. Let's just play it. And you don't have to go too crazy with this. You can kind of just give it some basic information and it will start creating the the image that you want based off of, or maybe what you're looking for. 
based off of which information you give it. So let's go ahead and we'll roll with this. Let's create a camera here. And that should be good. And then let's take this geometry and we're going to plug in our camera. We're gonna plug in our object here and we can add a light in if we want. But let's take our output picture. So we're gonna have to set this. We're going to create a path. I've already got one. So we'll just do this and then uh, initial picture uh, dot JPEG is fine. And then we will do an output folder here. So we'll do, let's say, um, final image dot JPEG or output folder. Sorry, it's just the folder. And then we need to give it a prompt. So with this prompt, let's just do alien landscape, maybe alien, maybe like with a snow covered mountain. Let's do, uh, maybe we don't want a realistic, let's do a concept art. Just give it whatever kind of a prompt you want based off of what you put in here. And then we wanna change the server to automatic 1111. You would need to input the, the URL that you have, and then you need to select your model. So. We don't have any in here right now. We click this get models and then we have, you should have your depth to image in there or whatever models that you put into your models folder. So we'll just select that depth to model or depth to uh, image and then we will go ahead and select whatever sampling methods we want. So there's all sorts of things that you can choose in here. Each one of these will output a different image. So we can just roll with these. Maybe we'll do, I don't know, click on this one as well. And then we have a bunch of different settings here. So our steps are gonna be kind of like how many iterations it goes through. So we'll set that up to maybe like 75. This CFG is gonna be kind of how much it changes the image. So maybe we crank that up a little bit more. And then the noise strength is kind of like how refined it is. It's a, like a loose description. I'll put in some settings here. We'll just up that to one for now. And then I will lower them and we'll show you kind of what the difference is between the two. And you can change the seed as well if you would like. And as well, you can do a random and then it, you can output like, if you do random here and then you set this up to like four, you'll get four images for each one of these. We're not gonna do that, we'll just leave it like this. So once we have this, we can go ahead and click generate. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll click save and continue. I didn't actually set up a path. You should save your scene somewhere. But once we click that generate, it should start to generate our image. And actually, I messed up here. We do need to generate our initial image. My mistake. So we need to click the render, render initial image, which we have now done. And then we can come back and click this generate. And once we've done that, it's going to cook out here. It takes a little bit of time. It is gonna run off of your GPU. And once you have it all generated it's going to pop up in here and we can view it inside Houdini as well so we'll give it a few minutes or a few seconds here to cook shouldn't take too long there we go and then we can go to open output viewer it's going to bring up this and we can select our image here and you see we get some interesting looking images here so you can switch between the three and you see the difference between the two. Let's say we don't like that. Maybe we want uh, something else in here. Let's do, let's add in a sphere here. Let's drop down and merge. Let's view this. Let's go ahead and just scale this up quite a bit, let's do like 30, maybe a little bit more 40. And let's move this up over here. I'm going to undo my camera here. Let's just move this back. I moved it out of view, so I don't want that. 
Let's actually crank this up to like, I don't know, 100. Maybe 300. Whoops. 300. We're going to get a real big sphere here. Let's put it into place kind of behind our landscape. We're going to say that this is like a planet here. Maybe like a moon. And we can come back in here. Let's come to our stable diffusion alien landscape with snow covered mountain and a. I don't know. Let's do a colorful planet in the sky. And then we can come back and we can click this generate again. It's going to ask us to save again, and then it'll go through and start generating our images. So we'll give it a second here. We'll let it cook out. Let's see what we get. This is super cool. So the way I see this is it's not something that I would use for like final image, like trying to create a, like a, just a final image to post on social media or anything. I use this as like a, a tool to generate some ideas for a scene that you're trying to block out. Maybe you're not sure where you want to go with your scene. You come in here, you got a general idea, maybe get some different ideas with this type of a, a view. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this gave us. That is super cool. I really like that one. Let's see, we got another one here. That's uh, that one's a little bit weird, a little bit wonky. This one is super cool as well. So you can see that you can do a lot with this. I really, really like this one. This one turned out really well. And uh, you have your initial image here. You also have the settings that you used up here. So it does render out to, I didn't put it in the folder, it looks like. So it does render out to an actual image. Bring it up if it will load. Looks like it's not one to load for some reason, but there we go. So got our image here. And then you can go through and you can upscale this and do whatever you want with it. But super cool that you can do this all inside Houdini. Huge shout out to Mr. Mosin Tabasi. Like I said, hopefully I didn't butcher your name, but this is a, a super cool tool that you can use to create some really interesting things inside Houdini and just kind of bash out some ideas without having to fully fledge it out. And if we wanted to, we could also just, let's just do one more. Let's just remove that concept art and let's see what it gives us with this. Super cool stuff. Uh, like I said, I don't want really plan on using this as a final image thing, but it's something that I might look into using for just kind of bashing out some ideas and having a general layout of my scene, maybe get some cool different variations of, of some things that I may want to just play around with and, and toy around and maybe create as my final image. So we'll come back in here. Let's take a look, see what it did here. So no longer concept art. This is more of uh, realistic is what it's trying to do. And again, here's part of the problem with, with using this as, as final image, right? Uh, this is, and this is kind of where all the controversy comes from. So this is, looks like it's pulling some, some sort of image off of somewhere that it is then wrapping into to your image, which you, you wouldn't want. Uh, it's kind of like stealing, stealing people's work, right? This is actually pretty cool as well, but Overall, it does a pretty good job. Um, like I said, use it to generate some ideas and kind of figure out where you want to go with your scene. But hopefully this helped you out. Download the, the files and take a look at them. And make sure that you follow uh, this Mosin Tabasi. I will leave his links in the description as well because I uh, wouldn't be able to do this without, without his awesome tool that he's created here. So anyways, uh, if you want to learn more about Houdini, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel. So take a look at those if you want to learn more. I also cover some stuff on Redshift if you're interested in me and that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.